wires, wires everywhere. This is part two of my series on Mellow Yellow's new electrical system. In the last video, we decided after 71 years and numerous previous modifications, especially changing the starting system from 24 volt to 12 volt, that the old M38A1 needed a new set of wires. Wires that are fused, wires that run things like headlights, brake lights, turn signals, horns, well, pretty much everything that's electrical. So anyway, welcome back to Grandfather's Adventures and Projects, and hope you enjoy rewiring Mellow Yellow Part 2. Today's video will prepare the harness. We'll be creating a fuse box to mount the fuse panel in, and we'll get that placed on the firewall. So I think it's time to get started. I'm starting out here with a model 1800 weatherproof protective case, small size. It's, gone, uh, it's a patchy brand from Harbor Freight, and it's a waterproof box. I'm going to mount it on the firewall, and I got to drill the holes in the side so I get my wires out and my uh, uh, fuse panel actually mounted on the inside so it can be closed up previously took the handles off because I'm not going to be carrying it anywhere unless it's hooked up to the Jeep so um, you know get that taken care of after drilling hole out I get the uh, rubber grommet get that seated in place I'm going to be running the wires through that grommet uh, and then through another one in the firewall to bring them up into the uh, dash area and of course, all the rest of them will just come straight down and follow the uh, frame or go to the various areas of the Jeep that we need to get the wires to. Well, I got the box and the wiring harness over on the bench now. This is where I'm going to start to sort out the wiring harness. There's a lot of wires on there that I don't need, so I'm going to be pulling those out. comes with some decent directions. Uh, I wouldn't say they're fantastic, but uh, uh, most of it get helps you get the job done if you have some questions about certain circuits you pretty much have to uh, be able to go online figure out you know how to get that that wired now to say any uh, directions of this that's probably best to lay this harness out on the floor next to the vehicle and all that stuff well I don't want to crawl around on the floor for this I'd rather just do it on the bench I know my machine pretty well I got a pretty good idea where the wires go so I just got to uh, learn what's in this harness, where they're all, all the various groups are. They mark the wires really well. They've got them uh, marked about every six inches and uh, telling you what's supposed to be there. I got some things I don't have, like uh, air conditioning, stuff like that. So those wires I'll pull back out of the harness. They won't be in the way when I'm down there. I'm not going to be adding an air conditioner to this later. So I will keep those wires, though. I'll keep them coiled up and I uh, have extra room inside that uh, uh, fuse box so that extra wires uh, that are uh, potential fuse lines will already be set up then all I got to do is unspool them later if I want to add some lights or uh, some other uh, electrical device to the machine and they've marked the wires by various groups uh, you got like your headlight group you got your steering column group and all that 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 kind of helps with the uh, direction of where they got to go and you want to kind of keep that stuff together so I'm going to be undoing the wires getting the extra ones out and then I'll probably coil them back up maybe a little bit looser than they are here and uh, they'll be ready as I run the various circuits in the Jeep I'll be able to concentrate on that particular wire group so here we've got the actually the tail light group and uh, we'll start unraveling that I'm kind of running the wires in the direction that they're going to be going on the uh, um, Jeep itself and get a pretty good idea which wires are in the group you know right turn signal left turn signal uh, and this one actually also has the uh, um, sending unit wire for the uh, gas tank oh well, that's something else I get to put in uh, fuel valve or what do you call it uh, gas gauge Man, imagine that. I want to stick a stick in the uh, 
opening anymore to tell how much gas I have. Anyway, uh, we're getting these wires sorted out. We'll come back a little bit later. So here's one of the wires that uh, goes into the back end that I don't need. So I'm going to be working on pulling that one out. As I pull some of these out, um, you can see on the bench there, some of them are coiled up, put tightly together. Uh, those are ones that have actually hooked up to the fuse box. And I'm um, just keeping those available in case I need them later. Now we got that yellow wire from the rear all uh, coiled up. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, finish this sorting of all the wires and that. And then we'll come back uh, when we're ready for the next step. Okay, ready to start feeding the wires uh, through this one wiring group at a time. Get them through there, the ones that need to go through. And then uh, we'll end up with our fuse block or fuse panel uh, right there on the inside. And we can go ahead and mount that to the box. So anyway, we'll get these wires uh, slipped in here. Um, one of the things I had to do was I had to make my hole a little bit bigger. I made it kind of double wide. Uh, and then I had to take the uh, grommet out. I'll be able to put the grommet back in. And if I have any extra space there, I'm just going to fill it with some uh, uh, silicon. At this point, we got most of the wires through. I've recoiled the individual groupings together there. And the fuse panel is left inside the box, along with some of the extra wires that uh, can be used for potential circuits in the future. A few zip ties. We keep all this wire in a nice, neat fashion inside the box and out of the way from the rest of the stuff that we need there. But we're getting pretty close to being able to hang this thing in the firewall. I use the screws they supplied to mount it underneath the firewall, through the firewall, to mount the fuse panel to my box. And then I'll mount the box to the firewall. So anyway, I just got to drill those out and get that uh, attached. After marking my holes, I go ahead and drill, uh, uh, drill them out so that I can get my screws through there. Have to do four of them and we'll have that thing mounted. Okay, here goes one of my last screws. I just about have this thing ready to go. Just button it up and then we'll haul it over to the Jeep. There we go. Let's take a look at this thing. We've got it mounted on there, wires that are coming through. We got all the extra wires uh, coiled together there on the left on there. It'll actually be on the right when we get in the Jeep. And we're ready to ready to go to the next step. One last look at it. I just got done putting the grommets in and now we can have it set. This is the way it's going to set in the Jeep. And just make sure everything looks like it's set to go. So I think it looks good, so I'm going to haul it over there, and we're going to start putting it on. So here's where it's going to get mounted in the Jeep. Right on the firewall there, you can see the, the one grommet on the left. That's where the wires will go through into the dash area, and then by the steering column. So I already pre-fit this box. I got it up there before. Make sure I had clearances for the shovel and stuff that's on my roof. And I just got to get, uh, I'm just going to hold it in there with one screw now. So it's flexible, I can move it around. I'm going to have to loosen it up anyway when I put the final wire, final wire mold on that bundle of wires where it comes out of the box at. It actually uh, turned out pretty nice. So let's see, closes up. Everything would be nice and waterproof in there. Now we're going to start sorting the wires out, getting them laid out in their different spots, different areas, 
and then I'll begin the wiring. At this point, I can sort out each one of the wiring groups, kind of lay them in position, general vicinity of where they might go. Uh, right now, I'm just kind of sorting them out, and then I can map out my uh, where I'm going to put the wires exactly, you know, in terms of, of the vehicle, keeping them away from hot things like the exhaust pipe and all that kind of stuff. Um, but they, they are really well marked, and uh, I've got it pretty well set up. I think I forgot uh, a wire there and pulling it back out. It's one that I really didn't think I needed, so I'm getting that out of there while I'm, uh, while I'm sorting these. But I want to get them all separated, and then as I begin to do each one of the various systems, I'll start to cover them with uh, wire mold and everything and be in pretty good shape. Okay, next I'm going to put on some of the wire molds. Wire mold I got is um, expands and stuff. It's kind of like the Chinese finger torture. But you got to put it, it's not split, so you got to put it uh, on the wire from one end and then, you know, pass it on down. So I'm going to try that on here. Uh, the first set of wires I'm going to use it on is the wire group that goes into the ignition system on the inside under the dash where the ignition switch would be. So, the other thing that I've used, I, I bought some of the uh, electrical tape, but it's the cloth tape. And I found that it really does a nice job. I was a little bit skeptical of it at first, but uh, we'll see how it lasts in the long run. But it really does a nice job, and it reminds me of the old friction tape that we used to be able to get in the old days. Okay, I'll tape off this wire mold now at the ends, and uh, then i got to feed that line back through that grommet and up into the dash area over by the ignition switch. And then I think we're going to be probably ready to call it a day.